Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about Alice Fay's uh, book called The Tower Steps. It's a Rapunzel retelling and let me tell you, it is amazing. So the book starts off with a gentleman getting caught in a witch's garden stealing a particular plant. And uh, when the witch asks him what he thinks he's doing, he tells her that his wife has been craving this plant. And he's been stealing it and feeding it to her. Um, they know to the man and his wife, this plant actually bestows powers or, or magic onto the child if a pregnant woman eats it. And of course it can also kill you. Like there, if it's prepared one way, you're fine. If it's prepared another way, it could kill you. So of course she's thinking, oh my gosh, this man has killed his wife. And he's like, no, my wife is fine. She's been eating it like this. And so she goes and she sees the wife and she explains to them that because she has eaten so much of this, that it's going to make their child very powerful. And she offers to help them, offers to take the child. And they tell her, no, we just can't give up our baby. And they keep the child for about three years. And then they come to her one day, the baby had a tantrum, blew out the windows in the house. They can't keep her anymore. We can't raise her. You had offered to take her originally. Can we still give her to you? And the witch says, yes, I can take her. I'll raise her. It's not a problem. So the witch raises her, names her Marigold, um, and raises her in this tower. And Marigold has powers, but she does not like to use them. She doesn't like the way it feels when she uses her gift. It makes her feel very funny. Um, and so she has, uh, she, the, about, about the most magic she does is create steps for the witch when she visits her every day, brings her food, comes to see her, check on her, make sure she's doing okay. Uh, the witch brings her books and tries to encourage her to, to use them, to learn how to do magic so that that way she can be around normal people. And the girl just keeps telling her, no, I'm not ready. I could hurt somebody. I'm not ready yet. And, and stays in the tower. Um, the witch tells her about a doctor who has offered to help her and the girl agrees but asks that the witch be there for the first, at least the first couple of appointments just because she's really nervous about being around somebody she doesn't know. The only other friend she has is the gardener boy that the witch keeps, who helps, who tends to the witch's garden around the tower. Her and the gardener boy exchange notes when he, um, brings, he sends her food up on like a pulley system in a basket and when he um when he does that he leaves notes and then she when she sends it back down she sends him a note and they've been conversing with each other that way for a while um well so the doctor shows up and of course the girl has super ridiculously long hair like she's thought about cutting it a million times and every time she brings it up the witch is like well you can cut it but it's never going to grow back exactly the way it is now if you cut it so you need to be 100 percent positive that you want to do that and so she thinks about it and, and the doctor, you know, tries to ask her about her magic and explains to her that magic's not scary. It's not that bad. Um, and she keeps telling him, well, you know, I just, I don't like my magic. It's just the way it is. Um, he wants to get her to use it. She doesn't. He, for some reason, assumes that her magic is kept in her hair, which is why it's so long. And she tries to explain to him that it's not her hair has nothing to do with her magic. And, and he doesn't seem to believe her and wants her hair. And so the witch has to go on a, a job. She goes away from time to time, not very long, couple of days tops, has to go on a job and tells the girl to, to maintain her appointments with the doctor. Well, she makes the doctor mad during an appointment. He comes back late that night and like he's drunk, he slurs, she lets him in um, and thinking that she can convince him, like, you know, that she can apologize and then realizes that he's drunk and he tries to attack her, which is where the gardener boy, Oscar, shows up and Oscar comes to her defense, gets him out of there, kicks, basically throws him out of the tower, makes sure she's okay. And then her and Oscar sit and talk for hours because they've never actually met face to face before. And Oscar explains that he's a, um, his specialty with magic is with plants and the witch had found him in the slums of some city street and took him in and and he's been tending her garden ever since um and one of the things that the doctor had asked her about was had, uh, was had she ever considered sealing her magic and she didn't know what that was and she was frustrated because the witch had never explained sealing her magic to her and so it made her angry that the witch had never you know told her that she could seal her magic and not have to use it anymore and 
So she, and she waits, you know, nervously for the witch to come back because she wants to talk to her, tell her what the doctor had done to her and ask that he never be allowed back. And when the witch comes back, she's angry. She's mad at Marigold. She can't believe that Marigold would, would go sneak around behind her back and come to find out the doctor had found her before she got to the tower and had told her all these lies that he had found Oscar in Marigold's tower, that they were canoodling you know having a relationship and that Marigold had been lying to her and and so the witch was angry at Marigold and Marigold you know accused her of not telling her about sealing her magic and it just kind of just a lack of communication from everybody all around they she kicked her out she told Marigold to figure it out find her own way get away from her okay fine so Marigold left she ends up in some town nearby. She's working as a washerwoman. She's cleaning clothes. She basically, one of the girls that she works with found her, you know, hiding, you know, sleeping under a bridge. And was like, you shouldn't sleep here. Here, I'll show you where's a good place to sleep. And, and kind of helping her figure out how to be her own person. Um, but she's still, she's still, you know, curious, you know, she misses the witch, she misses her tower, she misses her books and her cushions, and she realizes now that she had it really good, and she's upset that the witch didn't listen to her, um, and then she starts to hear rumor, uh, about Oscar, and that the, the witch that she has lived with for her whole life, her foster mother, is actually charged with going after rogue mages, and sealing their magic and that's when she learns that sealing your magic is not a good thing because what ha it doesn't stop your magic basically what happens is it prevents you from being able to use it and your magic builds up over time and if you don't have a witch or major warlock who's willing to drain you of that magic uh you explode like it, it literally just completely destroys you and so then it makes her wonder why did the doctor want her to do that in the first place if it was going to destroy her and it, it puts the witch in a, a better light because it's like, oh, well, she didn't tell me because she didn't want me to get hurt. Then she hears that the witch sealed Oscar's magic and kicked him out. And so now she feels responsible because it was her fault that Oscar got in trouble in the first place. So she goes <clears throat> looking for him. And it takes her some time. She she starts, she goes to all these inns asking after a boy with green magic, um, and <clears throat> who had magic with plants and finally she hears from someone that there was a boy who used to have green magic who came back and his magic had been sealed and he was staying at this particular pub so she goes there and the owner of the pub doesn't trust her and she's like no I I know Oscar tell Oscar it's Marigold I'm a friend and so the the pub owner disappears and then he comes back and he says okay you're okay and lets her down into the cellar and the roots of this tree are just overtaking this cellar and she can almost not find Oscar in this and he's literally being encased in these roots and so she uses her magic to pull some of his magic out of him to, to try and help him and she manages to do that she manages to, to help him and it's then revealed uh, from the pub owner that the witch is looking for them for her for Oscar and Marigold's afraid that she's come back to finish him off or she's gonna kill him or something and so they decide that they're gonna hide and she does the best she can to get she doesn't have the magic cloak that the witch does because the witch used to take some of Marigold's magic when it got too much for her and she would put it into the into her her cloak and she doesn't have a cloak, but she has a shawl. So she puts the magic she takes from Oscar into the shawl, and then she uses it to cover her hair because when she takes Oscar's magic at first, she takes it into herself, and it makes her hair glow like ridiculous, right? So <clears throat> her and Oscar try to run from the witch, and they finally end up coming meeting up with her. Um she catches up to them and it is then revealed that she's following them because she feels guilty. Uh, she feels bad that for what she did for Oscar come to find out the doctor was trying to steal uh, magic because he didn't have any of his own. And so he had wanted to have Marigold sealed so that he could steal her magic from her. Uh, and then when that didn't pan out, he found someone else to try and steal magic from. And so now he was put in prison and then of course made the witch realize that maybe the story the doctor had told her was not the accurate story and so then she went back and talked to you know went back and and wanted to find oscar to to apologize and and unseal his magic and uh that 
is that is how she found them and of course they ended up re reconciling uh going back to the tower things kind of settled down the way it was supposed to and, and it just it was heartwarming it was like okay yeah this is good like finally they got to talk it always drives me nuts when the reason that care like and I had I struggle with this a little bit because this witch has raised Marigold her whole life she knows Marigold's not a liar she knows she's not boy crazy she knows she doesn't sneak around behind her back so why on earth she took the word of a man she barely knew just because he was a trusted doctor and then listen to her own daughter who tried to tell her. I mean, that's just, that just drove me. I'm like, seriously, you're not going to listen to your own kid who is sitting here saying, mom, I didn't do this. Mom, I didn't do this. Mom, I didn't do this. And you're like, no, because some trusted doctor told me you did. I don't believe it. Like, really? Okay. I, it's kind of one of those, like, the mom was proven wrong and had to apologize. And it was a really sweet, like, apology. And I just, I really enjoyed it. Like, this was an amazing retelling. And for anybody who's who's into fairy tale retellings and wants to read it, this is one for you. So, happy reading. Happy reading.